Hello all, Madam Chester here, and if you hear any scurrying noises, it's literally squirrels in my attic. Congratulations to me on 101 subscribers, and um, I'm very pleased, and I thank you all. I'm going to try and push my, push my channel a little more forward now and make real categories out of my playlists. I have no real playlists. Uh, I do a lot of movie reviews, and I'm going to concentrate now on movie reviews. Watch something yesterday. It was called Gemma, Gemma Bovary, and it was a farce, a French farce, bien sûr. I actually wrote down notes, so I'm going to pretty much just read from the notes. I woke up this morning, and I said, let me, uh, let me make a proper outline of the movie so I don't forget things. So, forgive me if I look like I'm reading, because I kind of am. Game of Bovary, a game of baguette L. A comedy, although the female lead dies. Martin, an ex-scholar who has returned to Normandy to take over his father's bakery, is intrigued by his new English neighbors, Charlie and Gemma Bovary. He's a furniture restorer, and she does home decorating specializing in faux finishes. Martin's wife is very French with kinky hair, gallic nose, and given to earth toned smocks. She also works in the bakery. Uh, where am I? Gamma resembles a young Valerie Bertinelli and is drop dead picaresque. Martin spends most of the movie staring at her. Their dogs keep meeting up. His is a kind of mutt named Gus, and she has a bit of white fluff named something like Constantine, equally absurd. They meet at his boulangerie, and Gemma fangirls over all the lovely breads. He takes her into the back to show her the process of kneading, which gives the cameraman plenty of suggestive, flower-dustive vignettes of her, and no seduction takes place. Good, because he's quite a bit older than her. Also in the area is a mixed Franco-Ango couple. The wife is a French valley girl with a most bizarre accent, iron hair, and a paleo diet. Husband is some tall, bald guy. Martin, a femme, have a son who doesn't seem to do a whole lot except fail in school. I don't even know why they bothered to cast him unless it's to show that they weren't childless, and he does play a, a minor joke at the end. So, it turns out the Franco-Anglos want Gemma to redo a room in their chateau. Gemma discovers, through seeing a photo in Maison Beautiful, that they are friends with one of her old lovers, whose name I forgot. Hold that thought. Well, walking one day, Gemma is stung by a bee and goes into a medically unrealistic anaphylactic swoon. Martin flags down another neighbor, a curly-haired fellow on holiday from school, and they take her to a clinic. Gemma and Curly Boy subsequently start an affair which Martin predicts and spies on. During a banging session in Curly's chateau, they knock over a serre's porcelain, which Gemma brings home, saying her husband can mend it. Martin, who sees in Gemma total parallels to the Flaubert classic, copies the letter which Rodolphe, the other man in the novel, sends to Emma, and sends it to Gemma, hoping Hoping, hoping to quash the affair. Gemma was going to go back for London for a while with her husband, but this news puts the trip on hold. Meanwhile, Curly Boy's mother comes home. Où est mon sèvre? Boy, she's, she's severely French. Told, told, told Charlie has it. She heads there to find Charlie has no, no knowledge of either it or her son. She thinks he's stolen it and sends a letter from her lawyers to resolve it. Well, Charles is often blighty, so Gemma asks Martin to deal with the correspondence, because her French is, like, very lame. Through a gaffe, she realizes that Martin has written La Belle Lettre. Martin also freaks out when he sees Gemma has bought a five-kilo bag of rat poison. It's been established that she detests the field mice that abound. So, the past lover shows up at the Franco Anglos, and guess what? something happens. He goes to the Bovaries to persuade Emma to run away with him. Suddenly, among much outcry, Emma is dead. 
Did she make use of the half ton of arsenic? No. Turns out she was going, she was eating one of Martin's conciliatory loaves and began to choke. Loverboy was giving her the Heimlich when Charlie came in, thought they were banging, and pulled him off her. She subsequently dies. Their story is told in flashback, opening when Martin sees Charlie burning Emma's things in the yard, and he steals her diary. It turns out she really didn't want to leave Charlie, but who cares? She was a real sell-off. I liked her until every time she opened her mouth, that English noise came out. Anyway, there's a funny bit at the end when Martin's son tells him that there's an Anna Karenina who has moved into the old Bovary house. Remember, it's a comedy. So, about this movie, I really liked it. I'm going to give it four out of five croissants. I really only have two left. Here they are. I really like the look of the film because it takes place in Normandy. There's a little scene in Rouen in the cathedral uh, where he's supposed to meet Emma, Emma Gemma. Where Martin's supposed to meet Gemma, but he doesn't. He goes outside and finds her, like, you know, tonguing, tonguing the love, old lover boy instead. And there's chateaux and, and, and baguettes and lovely bread and all kinds of van. Uh, if you don't know the Fulbert story, you won't groan at the obvious parallels, like, you know, the, the names are the same and the story more or less more or less follows the Flaubert novel. Uh, there's enough English in the film to make non-French speakers comfortable because, you know, there are, you know, there's the English couple and there's the half-English couple and and she speaks bad French and he speaks bad English. So so it kind of works out. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this and I'm going to be doing more film reviews, but I would, like I said, four out of five croissants for this one. Um, don't skip it. It's on Tubi right now. Bye.